given me. Nothing will take away from me. Thank you, God, for the joy that I've got in you. Thank you, Lord. I've got the joy. I've got the joy. I've got the joy. I've got the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a great big praise clap. If, if you are an intercessor, I want you to come right down here as they sing it one more time. If you're an intercessor, God wakes you up at night. God calls you to pray. And you don't turn over, but you roll out. Come down here. Sing it one more time. Sing it. Come on, lift your hands as we sing it. some people here that have a call to pray, but you've never really entered into that, that position that God has for you. I want you to come down here right now too, because this, there's an anointing going to fall on people, an anointing to stir you to prayer. And as you're coming, I want us to begin to pray the 23rd Psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, I want you to draw a circle about you. That circle's the will of God. And I want you to begin to bring your family into that circle by speaking their names right now. Come on, begin to speak out loud, every member of your family. Father, today we declare your kingdom come and your will be done in our families. Devil, you can't have our homes. You can't have our children. You can't have the wrong kind of friends to invade their lives. I break off everything the devil's tried to put on your family. Now speak their names. Speak their names. Father, I pray for Justin and Jessica and Rachel. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I pray for Rex, for Elizabeth, for John. I decree nothing but your will. I pray, Lord, for Murphy. 
I pray for, for Lincoln and for Jacob today. Lord, be with Jacob. Encourage him. I pray for Landon. God, you've got a great plan for his life. Let that plan be fulfilled. I pray for Margaret. Come, hallelujah. Come on, tell the devil his power is broken off your home. Satan, you have no rights over our children, over their future. It's in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now reach over and touch the person next to you. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just mad at the devil. But next to loving you, I love your people. And I bless you on the right of me. Something good's going to happen to you. God's got a miracle for you. You'll never have cancer, diabetes, heart disease. You shall live to be a good old age. I bless you on the left of me. God's going to prosper you. There's a spirit of increase. There's great wisdom upon your children when it comes to handling money. I bless those in front of me and in back of me. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. May every demonic power be broken off of you. In Jesus' name, I bless you for the glory of God. Now lift your hands to the Lord. Just begin to praise Him out loud. If you're watching by television or by listening by radio, just begin to praise the Lord right where you are. Father, we bless your name. 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 There's healing in this room. Come on, there's healing in this room. There's healing in this room right now. Lay your hand on that part of your body where you need God to touch you. Be healed. Be healed. Pain, come out in the name of the Lord. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now I want you to turn your attention just for a moment to our screens. I am in Mosion. This is like Hassan. Hassan. Those pictures were taken on an iPhone from the manager of our, our TV station in Bethlehem. Those were taken right outside of his window. That last picture you saw was taken from our studio, from the, from the roof of the studio. On one of them, his wife is crying. Right now, Israel is under a severe attack. And uh, this could be the beginning of Ezekiel 38 and 39. If there's a major terrorist attack on the United States, and when you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, America is not in that picture. Something's happened to America. And if, we don't know in God's timetable, but we're getting pretty close to when this is supposed to happen. But this is a very important, serious time. The Bible says that we as Christians are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now, I've done a lot of work with the Palestinians. I've met with the prime minister. I've met with the head of the Supreme Court. I've met with um, Arafat's nephew, who's the ambassador to the UN. So I, I, I've worked with all of them. And some of the Palestinian people are not Hamas. And some of them are the most hospitable, kindest people in the world. So don't be confused by everything. But we're to pray for Israel. The Jewish people, that's God's given place. And God said, I'll bless those that bless you, and I'll curse those that curse you. And so we're praying 
we're praying. We're standing with Israel. And don't get confused on what side you're supposed to be. We stand with Israel. And we pray for all the innocent people. But the enemies of Israel, we curse them in the name of Jesus. I curse Hamas. I curse Hezbollah. I curse the Huni rebels. In Iran, poke their finger in the eye of God. Now, I can hit David, and David won't do anything. I can push him, and he just, he's easy to go around. But you stick your finger in his eye, and then immediately there's a response. Well, God says, you touch Israel, you poke your finger in my eye. And you're going to see things happen. And right now, I want us to come into agreement. And these intercessors here, I want you to begin to pray for Israel. And I want you to pray for Israel at least three times a day. I want you to speak peace. Loose the angels of God. Come on, let's agree together. Let's begin to call on the Lord. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Father, in Jesus' name, you said the enemies that come against you one way shall be smitten, and they shall flee before you seven ways. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against Hamas. We come against their leadership. We come against their strategy that will fail. We come against the Ayatollah and the demons of Islam that would come to harm, attack. We bind that in the name of Jesus Christ. Devil, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. I loose the angels of God. I loose Michael assigned to Israel. I loose his warrior angels, war warriors of rank, warriors of legend, warriors that have done exploits throughout the word of God. I loose them today in the name of Jesus. They shall bring down, down the demons, the demons of Baal, the demons of Hamas, the demons of Iran. They shall fall in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I come against the anti-Semitism in this country. I come against it at Harvard University, at Yale University, in the Ivy League schools. I come against it at our universities. I come against the spirit of hatred towards the Jewish people in Congress. I bring it down. I bring it down. I bring it down. They will not prosper. In Jesus' name, Father, we speak peace. Now, once again, I want you to draw a circle about you. Father, we station angels around every person here. No gun will shoot you. No fire will burn you. No bomb will harm you. No terrorist will destroy you, nor your family, nor your property in Jesus' name. Lord, a thousand shall fall at our side, but 10,000 on our right hand, but it shall not come nigh you. If you receive that, say amen. amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power the glory forever. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise for that today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may return to your seats, and uh, as you do so, Pastor Kevin is coming to serve the communion. If you need a communion packet, if you would just lift your hands real high and keep it up, and the ushers will come and serve you, anyone that needs a communion packet. I want to read Psalm 7, verse 9. It says, O righteous God, who searches minds and hearts, bring to an end the violence of the wicked. Make the righteous secure. Have you found yourself praying that lately? Oh God, bring the end, bring the wickedness to an end. Come on, amen pray that as pastors, we're praying that over Israel. Just, I encourage you to just to continue to pray that. Hallelujah. 
I want to encourage you today to uh, not only be intercessors and pray, but pray with authority. Everybody say, pray with authority. I'll give you a couple scriptures real quick. Psalms 91, as you know, you shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon, you'll trample under your feet. Amen? And Luke 10:19. everybody say Luke 10, 19. Jesus said, I give you authority, authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, the devil. Come on, amen? We have authority. How many of you know your family, there's a fight in your family, it's a spiritual fight. How many of you know there's a spiritual fight going on in our nation and all these things? And we, we need to be people of authority and pray with authority. I wanna encourage the men to be intercessors too. Most of the people up here were women, that's great. But men, you need to be a man of authority. You need to pray with authority. Take, a, take the fight to the devil. You're not, you're not gonna have my family. You're not gonna have my church. You're not gonna have my nation. You're not gonna have my city. Amen? So let's pray with authority as you pray. Thank God for our pastor who's taught us to be people of prayer. And now I encourage you today to pray with authority, amen? You would take out your communion. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that we already have the victory. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, I thank you, God, that you've given us authority over the enemy. And Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, that we're more than conquerors. We're not wondering if we're going to make it or not. As we sang today in worship, as we worshiped you, we sang about how powerful, mighty you are. You've never lost a battle. You've never lost a battle. And Lord, we're going to stand in that authority. We're going to pray in that authority. We're going to speak that authority over our city, over our family, over our nation, and over Israel. In Jesus' name, we thank you that you won the battle on the cross. Thank you for this bread. Thank you for this cup, God, that stands for your body and your blood. In Jesus' name, let's eat together. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. I'm really glad to be in church today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you're going to come and collect your cups. If you would, just turn your attention to the screens. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Evangel. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. We have a ton of exciting upcoming events for you and your family that you don't want to miss out on. Men, don't miss the Wednesday morning time of prayer at 6.30 a.m. with Pastor Rogers. This is a great time of prayer and fellowship and is followed with a delicious breakfast. Guest speaker Mark Hankins will be with us April 14th and 15th, Sunday for all service times, and Monday at 6 p.m. These will be two days of powerful ministry and encouragement. Don't miss out. ORU Evangel is having a Get Started meeting for interested students on Monday, April 15th at 7 p.m. at Evangel North Church in Clarksville, Indiana. ORU Evangel offers affordable, world-class, spirit-empowered degrees, including business administration, Christian counseling, Christian leadership and ministry, and so many more. This meeting is geared towards graduating high schoolers and adults ready to fulfill God's plan by getting a degree. Scholarships will be given away during the meeting, so make plans to attend. There will be a speeder's lunch meeting on Wednesday, April 17th at noon in the Evangel Billtown Sanctuary. And on Saturday, April 20th, there will be a men's breakfast at 9 a.m. Don't miss either of these times of food and fellowship. Women, don't miss out on our upcoming Go Girl speaker, Jesse Gibson, on Friday, April 19th at 6 p.m. This will be an encouraging time of fellowship full of worship and powerful teaching. The Evangel Singles Ministry is having a game night on April 19th at 6 p.m. There will be appetizers, pizza, and plenty of fun games. For more information, please contact Barbara Carter. The Evangel Prison Ministry will be holding a lady spring luncheon on Saturday, April 20th at noon in the Evangel Billtown Sanctuary. There will be a derby hat auction, delicious food, and a powerful word from guest speaker Sherry Holt. If you would like to attend or host a table, please call the Prison Ministry Office at 502-231-9100, extension 1228. Dr. Hendrick Forster will be with us on April 21st through the 23rd, Sunday for all service times, and Monday and Tuesday at 6 p.m. Dr. Forster has planted churches in 75 nations on six continents over the past 34 years. This will be a powerful time of impartation and teaching that will equip you to build the kingdom of God. 
The Evangel First Fruits Community Garden is kicking off with a special dedication ceremony on April 27th at 10 a.m. There will be prayer, a group photo, and plenty of tools available to start work on your plot. To keep up with all that's happening here at Evangel, stop by the Welcome Desk, follow us on social media, or head over to our website, ewpc.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good morning. It's great to see you in the house of the Lord. I'd like to take a moment and welcome those that are here for the first time or the first time in a real long while. We're so glad that you've come. Our ushers have a guest card we'd like to get to you. And if you'll just lift your hand, they'll bring it to you right where you're seated. So all of our first-time guests, just hold your hand up there for a moment. What we would ask is when you have a moment, fill that out. If you get it done before the offering, you can drop it in there. If not, you can always hand it to an usher or take it to the welcome desk. Let's give all of our guests a good hand of welcome here this morning. God bless you. I'm going to quickly follow up on a few things that were on the announcements and some that were not. One that was not is there is a um, golf league for men, or, men and women this beginning May the 8th. It's be resuming. This has been a lot of fun for some of our folks over the past years. Uh, it starts May the 8th on Wednesday nights. If you would, go back and sign up at the welcome desk. Tomorrow night, there is the ORU meeting that you saw. 19 affordable degrees uh, from a world-class university are available at a very affordable price. That meeting, will be there will be five scholarships given away. So we just want to make you aware of that. That's at 7 o'clock over at Evangel North. And then I want to mention the Evangel First Fruits Community Garden. Uh, space is running out, but you can get on a wait list in case someone changes their mind. Go back to the table today before you go. Then on Wednesday night, Evangel Christian School is having orientation. If you'd like to get your children into a great Christian worldview educational system that's above and beyond, we encourage you to check it out. That's Wednesday at 4.30 in the afternoon. You would actually go, or you can go to Evangel Christian School. Spell it out, evangelchristianschool.com. Click on admissions and tuition, then on inquiry, and you'll be able to get the information. Fill it out, send it in with a note of your interest because online school is also available through Evangel. Concerning the Go Girl announcement about Jesse Gibson coming in to minister, I've been asked to make sure you know that that will be bilingual. It'll be in English and Spanish with interpretation or translation taking place. And then also there is child care for that event. Now, we're doing our best to pare down the number of announcements that are made. And so beginning next week, we will have a mobile bulletin available that can be sent directly to your phone. So if you have your phone, get it out right now. Scan the QR code with your camera that's on the screen. If you would like to receive this directly to your phone each Saturday, it'll have all these announcements and more and it'll be directly there at your fingertips. If you want to just enter the number and then text the word events, you may do so. You do have to opt in uh, in order to meet the requirements that we have to fulfill to have this available. So please be sure to do that, and we'll be letting you know in the days to come how you may do so. But if you do it today, you'll be on the list to receive the bulletin next week Next Saturday, at some time in the day, it'll come out to you, and you'll have all this information at your fingertips. At this time, would you help me welcome our pastor as he comes, Dr. Bob Rogers. Praise the Lord. We're glad to have everyone here, as Pastor Kevin mentioned, and Brother Charles Gerhardt and your beautiful wife. Uh, wave to everybody. Let's give him a great big hand. He passed. He's a great evangelist. And minister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I sense something real good is going to happen. I know all the University of Kentucky fans have been praying and fasting this. And God answered with the Pope. And so uh, we're praying for good things to happen to UK. Amen. Say it's all U of L fans here. So they weren't uh, praising God too long. Um, 
Today, we have with us Brother Mark Hankins. Brother Mark Hankins has been a great friend of our family. His dad uh, and my dad went to school together, Brother Billy Bob Hankins. And uh, his father and his mother had a unique gift of God. Uh, they pastored down in West Texas, and uh, his uh, mother would have a tongue, a real prophetic tongue. Sometimes it would be Chinese, sometimes it would be different dialects. And then uh, his father would interpret those, that message. And so years ago, I went down and preached there in West Columbia. And it was the first time that I had seen the early morning prayer meeting in the way that actually we conduct it now. And uh, his brother, Mike Hankins, led the people in worship, and then they began to pray at six in the morning, and Mike would come to that prayer meeting in a coat and tie at 6 a.m. But it was so stirring that we began that prayer meeting uh, here, and the facility we have here is not uh, compatible to how uh, we used to do it at the other location when we had a, a different facility. But uh, they are some of the great people of God. And he's going to be ministering not only this morning, but tonight and Monday uh, evening. Six o'clock on Monday, five o'clock tonight. If you're watching by television or listening uh, on the radio, you'll want to come. And I promise you, you're in for a great treat today. Let's give them a great big hand of welcome. Tell them welcome here. Amen. Uh, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. And how we do it, if you're visiting, we receive our tithe, and then we have a march. And that's where we bring our seed faith gift. Uh, I have something that I want to give to everyone who plants a seed today in the, in the march. And this is a testimony of a lady by the name of Rachel Eady. She is an Israeli. Uh, she would book, bake cookies. They called her the mother to the soldiers at one of the military bases there in Israel. On October the 7th, in that invasion that took place, they killed the neighbors on either side. They came into her house, probably 12 to 15 of these people uh, of Hamas. They held a grenade over her head. They hit her with the butt of the rifle. But she saw how food had always calmed down soldiers and calmed down people when they were in stress. So she said, let me fix you something to eat. So she fixed some food, and then she began to bake cookies. And uh, every time they would start to get all uh, ready to kill her, she would fix them some more cookies. And so they said, well, these may be poison cookies. And so she'd eat one or two, and... And they would eat. One said, well, I'm a, I'm a martyr. He says, yeah, what else do you do? And uh, so she prolonged this for hours and hours and hours until a squat team was able to come. They came from the backside of the house. Her son was a member of that squat, a SWAT team. And they neutralized Hamas. And uh, her cookies became viral. They became legendary. And we have even, her, we have her testimony on this side, but we have the recipe for the cookies on the back side. And so we're going to place these down here to the front. And uh, they're guaranteed you won't gain weight on these special cookies. <laughs> but I also have a book, as long as I have these, um, this is uh, the Israel Gaza Wars written by... Um, my brother uh, Jimmy Evans, and it's a tremendous book. And for those who can give um, an offering of a generous offering, say generous. generous. Say generous is not a dollar. Generous is not a dollar. Say it's not ten dollars. It's generous. generous. So. Uh, we ask you to do that. I, I don't know what these books cost us, but around $10 with the uh, mail. But this will be a blessing to you as long as I have these. But I want us all to stand, everybody standing. Say with me, I love to give, love to, give to the work of God. 
Now let's say it the way you're supposed to say it in the South. I love to give to the work of God. Amen. Let's make this proclamation together. Lord Jesus, I come into your house, not empty handed, but bringing my tithes and offerings according to Malachi 3.10. The windows of heaven are open to me. Blessings are being poured out that I cannot contain. The devourer is rebuked for my sake. This year is a continuation of the Jubilee blessings. By faith, I have a better job, promotions, raises, bonuses and benefits, business opportunities, sales and commission increases, inheritances, rebates, settlements, and checks in the mail. I expect favor, interest, royalties, and scholarships, gifts, surprises, and newfound monies. I'm using wisdom and self-control in my spending my bills are decreasing and my income is increasing. I have the anointing for blessings, equipping me to be a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth. The favor of God's upon me and everything I put my hand to will prosper. Sowing in good ground that's bringing souls to the kingdom of God and my God supplying all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. We had a lady that was here in the first service, and uh, she, works, uh, she works as a postal carrier. She's delivered mail probably for 25 years. And she was delivering mail, and she fell and broke both ankles and her leg. Been in severe pain and came uh, before Easter when we asked people to bring a special offering for a Passover offering. She brought her offering. When she went home, God totally healed her. No pain. 100% healed. So when you bring your seed, I want you to name your seed. This is for my healing. This is for my family. This is for my children. I want you to bring your seed and name it when you do so. Amen. Father, thank you for the power of the offering. Let the needs be met in our lives and in your work in Jesus' name. Everybody said Amen. You may be seated. And God bless these ushers. And God bless you as you begin to come.
Hallelujah. Come on, give him a great big hand. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand. Praise the Lord. I want us to give Brother Mark Hankins a great big hand of welcome as he comes uh, here to Louisville, the greatest city in America, right here. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. We are blessed to be back here. And Pastor Bob and uh, Margaret and uh, staff. And uh, how many of y'all were here when we were here like 40 years ago? <laughs> Some of y'all were here. We were here 40 years ago. It took me a little time to get back. Uh, I always say 40 years and 40 pounds ago. But uh, 40 years ago and had great, great time with uh, Wayman and family and uh, Bob and we were traveling and and uh, wow, it took me a while to come back, but I'm glad to be back. We love uh, Pastor Bob and Margaret and we love the family. This is one of the great faith families in the state of Kentucky. I mean, we're blessed to be here. Praise the Lord. So thank you for letting me come back, Pastor Bob. I'm so happy. And y'all better come back tonight, right? Five o'clock tonight? And uh, Monday night at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a wild time. Praise the Lord. Uh, we've already been blessed this morning. We've already had fun this morning. I'm glad to have my wife, Trina, with me. And you might remember her. We uh, See how long we've been married now? Almost 48 years. 48 years almost. It changes every year. But um, one year behind. I look a lot younger than Pastor Bob, don't I? Yeah, well, just... Got to have a few young-looking preachers. But anyway, uh, um, we've uh, been running together for a long time, preaching the gospel, so we're blessed. And uh, we have two kids, and they came here. Probably they were four, five, six years old or something when they came here. And now our son's pastoring. Our daughter's traveling, preaching with her husband. And um, we got eight grandkids. Wow. Now, you know, uh, I probably look like a grandpa, but my wife does not look like a grandma, right? But it cost me a lot of money to keep her looking that way, so you pray for me. Uh, <laughs> hey, um, uh, I'm going to uh, tell you something about some of the books that we have, so maybe I have an usher help me pass these out real quickly here. This morning, we're talking about faith and about the spirit of faith, and if you were here the first service, man, I had a good time, first service. We got some smart people here, praise the Lord. And so this book, The Spirit of Faith, Joyce Meyer ordered 40,000 copies of this book on The Spirit of Faith, distributed to her partners, and it helped Joyce out a lot. She had a pretty bad attitude when she started reading this, and it's really helped her out. So who wants this book on The Spirit of Faith? Make a grab, a corn stalk, swing out over hell, spit in the devil's eye. Let's see. Uh, this book is called The Great Confession. How many know what The Great Confession is? Christianity is called the Great Confession. Among all other religions, Christianity is called the Great Confession. And it's not really the confession of your sin or failure. It's the confession of your faith. So that confession would be Romans 10, 9, and 10, that you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It is that confession of faith that precedes the possession of salvation. I said it's the confession of faith that precedes the possession, not vice versa. In other words, what you say, the word confession means to say the same thing or to agree with. And so that's our initial confession that Jesus is Lord. The moment you make that confession, no matter how you feel, come on, when you make that confession, you serve notice that the devil cannot dominate you, sin cannot dominate you, sickness cannot dominate you, poverty cannot dominate you. Jesus is your Lord, and he has set you free. He has delivered you from the power of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. In Christ you have redemption through his blood, even the remission of sin because of the blood of Jesus. So we're not just told that's how salvation happens, 
But we're told in Hebrews 4.14, Hebrews 10.23, uh, Hebrews 3.1, Hebrews 13.15, 1 Timothy 6.12, to hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering. Come on, we put a sign on the wall that said, no wavering allowed. Hold fast. Don't turn loose of it. Don't give up on it. Dad Hagen said, even if failure is looking you in the face on all four corners, you hold fast to your confession that Jesus is Lord, redeemed by his blood. No matter how you feel or how things look or what the circumstances are, hold on tight. Don't turn it loose. Hallelujah. What is your your confession of faith. And he says, hold on tight to it. Amen. And I, I like to go to rodeos every now and then. And my favorite event is the bull riding. How many of y'all? So I, I sit down there close to where you, the big screen and you can see the bull riders get on there. Did you know none of those bull riders get in a hurry? When they get on that bull, they wrap that rope around their hand. You say, Why? They planning on going for a ride. Come on, and it's only eight seconds. But when you get saved, this is more than an eight-second ride. I said, this is more than an eight-second ride. This is for the rest of your life. Come on, hold on tight. Come on, the devil try to buck you off in circumstances. Come on, but you go through that situation, say, Jesus is still my Lord. I'm still a believer. I'm redeemed by his blood. I'm not turning loose of it. I'm holding on tight. And so I was preaching in, in Louisiana a few weeks ago, and they had a bull rider in the ministry there at the church. And uh, so he calls his ministry in the church the nod. The nod. You know what that means? Because when he would get on that bull, before they would open the chute, you know, or the gate, they'd look at him and he'd go, the nod. <laughs> that means I'm ready. Open it up, baby. I'm holding on. Amen. So come on. How many of y'all ready to give the nod to the devil? Say, go on, open it up. I'm holding on fast, amen, holding on tight. And so get this book, very simple, but it'll help you know the things that you declare so that your confession of faith is in agreement with God. Come on, who are you going to agree with? Don't just agree with the way you feel. Come on, say what God says about you. So that's what this book is about. So give it to somebody on the great confession, amen. Then we've got this book called How to Feed Your Faith. I mean, no, you better feed your faith, starve your doubts. And so this book is, comes from 50 years of preaching. Did you know I've been preaching for over 50 years? And so you can tell by my voice probably. I've been preaching over 50 years, and this is 50 years of quotes. That means just the best statements of 50 years. Matter of fact, if you read this while you're in the bathroom, you may stand there a while. In other words, on faith, <laughs> confession, <laughs> righteousness, on the blood, on the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Lord. Oh, man, that's some amazing stuff in this book. And so I was reading it last night, and I got happy, and I, I, I gave myself an offering. I liked it so much. Anyway, so, so you got to get this book. I see somebody waving their hand right down there. So I don't know. Give it to whoever you want to. This is uh, Trenna's book called How to Pray for Your Family. Now look, Trina wrote this book because she we went through some fights for our family, for our kids and grandkids. So this is How to Pray for Your Family, and I tell people, we have seen your family, and you need prayer. So you get this book. Anyway, How to Pray for Your Family, Your Marriage. So I don't know who to give that to. That's Trina's book on the blood. And then one more thing here. This is called a set of CDs called The Bloodline of a Champion. How every chapter, every chapter is on the blood of Jesus, every message. Now, if you don't have a CD player, listen close. Many people don't anymore. If you don't have a CD player, go to the uh, app store, download Mark Hankins Ministries app. The app is free. All the messages on there are free, so you don't have to buy nothing. 
thousands of messages on the Mark Hanks Ministry app. Just download the app. You can listen to it any time, day or night. But if you have a CD player, anybody got one? This is on the bloodline. Give that somebody that's got a CD player. Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? Well, I'm super blessed to have my wife with me here, and she's going to sing or preach or prophesy. I don't know what she's going to do. Go ahead. <laughs> praise God. Get up on your feet. You've been sitting. Get up. Praise the Lord. such an honor to be here with you guys. And one thing I love about this church, you're a praying church. Amen. And you don't just whine about something. You pray about it in faith. And mountains move out of the way. Woo! I got an agreement with all these prayers today, and I know our future is bright. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Jesus said to say to the mountain, what? Be removed. be removed and be cast into the sea. So your faith has to say something. And then something you can say is greater is he. Come on. What is that scripture? That is in me than he that is in the world. We're going to sing about faith. We're going to a new level. You can kick that song on. Hallelujah. Come on. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Faith is a team sport. You can encourage each other. We're saying goodbye to the past. We're pressing forward. Amen. There's no giant too big. And we're saying something. Amen. Reaching for the prize and giving everything. I give my life for this. It's what I live for. Nothing will keep me from all that you have for me. You hold my head up high. I live for you. Cause greater is he that's living in me than he that
glory to God. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Woo! Man. All right, y'all can be seated if you want to. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to also to be back with my good friend, Pastor Joe Martin, and we have been friends all the way back to the 80s from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and look at him sitting over there. Boy, he is a sign and a wonder, praise the Lord, and uh, we're blessed to see you, Joe, and uh, also Charlie uh, Gerhardt from around here preaching, and I've uh, got a few more preachers from around here that's going to show up tonight, so you better come back tonight at what time? Five o'clock, man, we're going to have a good time, and we're going to lay hands on everything that moves tonight. So if you'll sit still, I won't bother you. All right, praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, we're going to talk about faith and how faith works, uh, but before we do, I like to tell a little joke, because I love to laugh. Even God likes to laugh. The Bible says that he sits in the heavens and he laughs. So, did y'all hear about the old man, the older guy that went to the doctor? And the doctor said, well, I see you have two problems. He said, one is you have high blood pressure, and two is you have short-term memory loss. The old guy says, well, at least I don't have high blood pressure. <laughs> y'all didn't like that joke? All right, you want me to tell you another joke? All right, this is, a, this is a simple one. Scientists have proven that having birthdays is healthy. The more you have, the longer you live. But scientists have also proven that women who gain weight live longer than the men who mention it. All right, all right, no more, no more, no more for you. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, and Mark 11, 22, 23. We're going to talk about faith and how faith works. 2 Corinthians 4, 13, the apostle Paul says, we having the same spirit of faith. If you ask the apostle Paul, what do you have? that keeps you from collapsing and quitting, what enables you to have joy and victory, Paul would say, let me tell you what I have. What we have is the same spirit of faith. And it says, as it is written, so he's quoting from Psalms 116. He's really quoting from the psalmist David. So he says, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. He said, we also believe and therefore speak. So he says, the spirit of faith has two main ingredients. Number one is I believe. I am a believer. I believe God. I believe the word of God. I am a believer. I believe, but it's not enough just to believe. He said, I believe, and therefore I speak. Someone said, even the devil don't care what you believe if you'll be quiet about it. In other words, faith requires not just believing, but believing and speaking. Dad Hagen, who taught us on faith, he said, believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural. He said, many people are looking for the spectacular and they miss the supernatural. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural. So if you're tired of natural results and you want some supernatural results, maintain a spirit of faith. I believe and I speak. That's what Paul said. That's what we have. The spirit of faith, I believe, and I speak, quoting from the psalmist David. How many would agree that David had the spirit of faith? Wow, he must have. He killed a lion just with his hands, a bear, and then he killed Goliath. He was the only one that would dare to even talk back to the giant. 
and he showed up at 17 years old. So you can have the spirit of faith at 17 years old. But Joshua and Caleb had the same spirit of faith at 80 years old. They said, we are well able to possess the land. In other words, the spirit of faith is something that you can have. Get it when you're young and all the way up to your 80. You're not looking for a rocking chair. You are well able to possess the land. So the spirit of faith. I believe and I speak. So believing is the attitude of faith. Speaking is the initial act of faith. In other words, your faith must be strong enough to move your mouth before it will ever move a mountain. Amen. The spirit of faith, I believe and I speak. Everybody say, I believe and I speak. And it opens a door to the supernatural. Amen. In other words, David, when he ran at Goliath, he said, he talked back to Goliath. He's the first one to talk back to him. Goliath was a giant. He was a bully. Everyone was afraid of him, but David knew his covenant with God, and he was not afraid. So David talked back to Goliath. In other words, Goliath said, and then David said. Goliath said, then David said. Goliath said, then David said. Then David ran at Goliath, hit him in the head, knocked him down, cut his head off with his own sword, and Goliath didn't say nothing else. That means never let the devil have the last word in any conversation, no matter what kind of giant you're dealing with in your life. So the Lord told me one time, he said, never run at your giant with your mouth shut. All right, let's try that one more time. If you're facing a giant, never run at your giant with your mouth shut. In other words, you must win the war of words before you win the fight of faith. Somebody ought to shout about that. In other words... I like the story that I heard years ago. I've actually heard it from John Osteen about a guy who was a bully in school. That means he was mean and pushed people around. He was a bully. And so he's walking around the school. He's got a piece of paper in his hand and got, uh, you know, things written on there. So his friend walked over to him and said, what, what do you have on that paper? And the bully said, these are the names of everybody in this school that I can whip. His friend got the paper and looked at it. He said, hey, you've got my name on that paper. He said, you can't whip me. Take my name off that paper. And so the bully just scratched his name off. In other words, you can tell the devil to take your name off his list of everybody he can whoop when you have a spirit of faith. Come on, you're a giant killer. You're a mountain mover. You have the same. Everybody say the same. I got the same spirit of faith. More than just the formula, more than just the principle, I have the spirit of faith. In other words, David, that's what he had. And David's mighty men. Anybody know anything about his mighty men? David had 400 mighty men that came to the cave of Adullam. And when they came to David, they were what? Distressed, discontent, in debt. Come on, they're defeated. But when they stayed with David, they became David's mighty men. So it tells some of the things that his mighty men did. Well, there's some great things in there, but one of my favorite ones is one of David's mighty men. It says that the Philistines came and they were going to uh, rob him of his beans or lentils. So it says one of David's mighty men Everybody else ran, but David's man stood in the middle of the beans and defeated the Philistines. He would not let the Philistines have his beans. So I read that one day and I said, Lord, that seems unusual because everybody else ran to save their life. But he stood there and fought over the beans. So I thought, why didn't he run? Because you can always get more beans. The Lord said, because if you let the enemy have your beans, 
then he's coming after your taco, your burrito, and your whole Mexican dinner. In other words, when you have a spirit of faith, you say, devil, you ain't getting my beans. You're not getting my health. You're not getting my family. You're not getting my joy. You ain't getting nothing. Amen. That's the spirit of faith. So, 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul said, that's what we have. How many of y'all got that? Does anybody in here got it? Anybody here got it? Anybody here got it? Sorry. Come on, I may not be the most educated. Come on, I may not be the best looking, but I'll tell you what I do have. I know I have a spirit of faith. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. I have the same Spirit of faith, same thing David had, same thing Paul had, the same spirit of faith. So 2 Corinthians 4.13 didn't say I'm trying to get it, said I got it. If you got it, you know you got it. And the spirit of faith is contagious. And so is the spirit of fear. You have to be careful who you're hanging out with because when people have a spirit of faith, it's contagious. They can catch it from you. Well, everybody's afraid of COVID, but if you have a spirit of faith, come on. You tell people, you better stay six feet away from me because you get close to me, you're going to catch a spirit of faith. And, and I call it having more than enough faith than just for your own personal use. I call it possession with intent to distribute. In other words, you didn't just get enough faith for you. You got enough for your children and your grandchildren, and you're going to pass it around to people around you. I have a spirit of faith. That means I believe, and I speak, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everybody say, I believe, and I speak. Now go to Mark 11, 22, 23, and let's see what Jesus had to say about faith and about how Faith works. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Here's what Jesus said about faith. I mean, think that Jesus might know something about faith. I mean, think he might be an expert. Sometimes when you're teaching on the subject of faith, sometimes people act like they kind of already know what that is. They're like, oh, I know that already. Um, but I have a, a swimming pool in our backyard at our home, and so I have eight grandkids. So all the grandkids, I make sure they know how to swim. Two, three years old. So I gotta have, send them to lessons, and then I watch them to see if they can swim. So I make sure, I tell the kids, I pay for all the lessons. I want all my grandkids to know how to swim. So one of my grandkids, his name is Gavin. And when he was about three years old, I guess, something like that, oh, you know, he had taken a few lessons, and, uh, and he was so happy, he came running, came to my house, running in the backyard, and I was standing by the pool. I happened to be standing by the deep end of the pool. Our pool was designed by my wife specifically, so you have a deep end, then it turns into an L, and then you have a real shallow end for the grandkids when they're little. Well, I happen to be standing by the deep end. Little Gavin, three years old, runs, and he calls me Poppy. He says, Poppy, Poppy. He says, I can swim now, Poppy. I can swim. Well, I knew he could not swim. <laughs> I had been watching him, so I knew he could swim in the shallow end. But that is not swimming. That's walking. So I knew he could not swim. And so uh, I was concerned because he said, I know I can swim. And then his dad walked up to me, my son-in-law, and he says, Poppy, that's right, little Gavin, he can swim. But I knew he could not swim. I had been watching him. So I was concerned because I want to be around. I want to make sure that they're safe. So little Gavin, standing there with his dad, and he said, Poppy, whew, I can swim now. So I just grabbed him and threw him in the deep end. And I said, show Poppy how you can swim. In the deep end. His daddy got a real surprise look on his face. I thought, why are you surprised? You said he can swim. So Gavin went into the deep end 
and he was sinking. But while he was sinking, he was making swimming motions. But he was still sinking. I looked at his daddy and I said, I told you he cannot swim. If I was you, I would jump in there and save him. So he handed me his phone, his wallet, and he jumped in there and pulled Gavin up out. And Gavin was spitting out water. You know, he wasn't really hurt. And I said, now, you go back to lessons. And there will be another test. Are y'all still here? Come on, sometimes people come to church and they go, I know about faith, I know about faith, I know about faith. But if life ever throws you in the deep end, sometimes people are sinking, but they're making faith motions, but they're still sinking. But I'm not interested in you making faith motions. I'm interested in you swimming. I'm interested in you winning. I'm interested in you overcoming. So you don't want to act like you already know everything about it. Look at somebody say, I believe he's talking to you right now. <laughs> You'll go back to lessons. Amen. Very interesting. The most important words that Jesus said about faith is in Mark 11, 22 and 23 and 24. So look at Mark 11, 22, because Jesus was a teacher. He taught on faith and how faith works. Do y'all find Mark eleven twenty two? Jesus said, have faith in God. Let's try that one more time. Jesus said, how many know you can end a lot of conversations with that one statement? While people are telling you what they're going through and their challenges, what do you want to say? Let's practice. Have faith in God. They say, well, people have let me down and I've got some difficult circumstances and I've got some mountains and some giants. What do you want to say? Come on, I've got a bad doctor's report. Come on. I'm, on, I'm having trouble in my family. I'm having a challenge with my finances. Have faith in God. Amen. And then in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, Jesus makes it so simple, you need a theologian to get confused about it. Let's try that one more time. I said, Jesus makes it so simple, you need a theologian to get confused about it. Jesus said, have faith in God. Listen, and some other translations say, have the faith of God. Amen. Some said, have the God kind of faith. But really, my favorite translation says, lay hold on God's faithfulness. All right, let's try this out over here. In other words, to have faith in God is simply you and I believing in, laying hold on God's faithfulness. In other words, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. Come on, he's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his name. He is a faithful, dependable, reliable, unchanging God. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. He sent his word and it healed them and deliver them from their destruction. God is faithful in the morning. He's faithful to every generation. He's been faithful in your past. He's faithful in your future. Never question God's faithfulness. God is faithful. Matter of fact, if you're struggling in your faith, just start praising God for his faithfulness. Let's try that one more time. I said, if you're struggling in your faith, do what? So I praise in God for his faithfulness. Wow. So in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, have faith in God. And Mark eleven twenty three. 
How many glad Jesus didn't say, figure it out? <laughs> How many glad Jesus didn't say, good luck? How many glad he didn't say, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't? <laughs> Let's see what Jesus had to say about it. Here's what Jesus said about faith. Or we call this the authority of the believer. Listen close. The authority of the believer, not the preacher, not the prophet. Every believer has authority. To have faith in God throughout the New Testament, it goes from faith in God to faith in the blood of Jesus. Romans 3.25, through faith in his blood. Then it goes Acts 3.16. His name, the name of Jesus, through faith in his name has made this man strong. And the faith which is by him has given him perfect soundness in the presence of you all. In other words, faith in the name of Jesus will change your body, heal your body, and change your life. Every demon trembles and runs when a believer stands up through faith in the name of Jesus. Faith in the blood of Jesus. Faith in the name of Jesus. Are y'all still here? I'm redeemed by his blood. I'm washed in his blood. I overcome by his blood. That means I believe and I speak. The blood. Everybody say the blood. The name. Then it says in Hebrews, the word of God did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. No matter how powerful the scriptures are, unless you mix faith with that, it remains a theological doctrine. But the moment you mix faith with the word, woo, don't get me started on that. Come on, so the moment you take the word and start acting like the word is true, that's the simplest definition of faith. It's to act on the word of God. Everybody say act. In other words, the initial act of faith is to move your mouth. I like to say it this way, your mountain needs to hear your voice. Praise the Lord. So when Jesus said, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he had just spoken to the fig tree. And the fig tree dried up. And the disciples said what? Lord, look at the results. You didn't cut it. You didn't kick it. You just talked to it. How many of y'all about ready to start talking to some things in your life? Come on, that'll dry up and leave your life. So Jesus had spoken to the fig tree. And the disciples were amazed. And Jesus could have said what? He could have said, I'm Jesus and you're not. He could have said, that's a deity trick that I learned in heaven and only the Father and I do it. And don't any of you earthlings try it or you'll, it'll blow the lips right off of your face if you get it wrong. No, Jesus said what I just did to that fig tree, it will work on a mountain and it won't just work for me. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Somebody ought to get happy already. In other words, Jesus said, Jesus said, whosoever. In other words, anybody can do this. You don't have to have a PhD. You don't even have to be good looking. Don't look around right now. You don't have to be good looking. You don't have to have a million dollars in the bank. But when you have faith in God, Whosoever. Whosoever shall say. 
So it begins with the saying of the speaking part of faith. And he mentions say three times and believe only once. Say. Believe those things he saith. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So he begins with a whosoever and he ends with a whatsoever. <laughs> Boy, I'm starting to enjoy this message already. This is my second time. Whosoever, anybody can do this. Whatsoever, it will work on anything. <laughs> I was 17 years old when I heard Kenneth E. Hagin, Dad Hagin, he came to my dad's church and he taught on faith. He taught on faith so much, I thought he ran out of sermon material. Because I was raised in church, I've heard thousands of sermons on all kinds of subjects, but Dad Hagen just kept teaching on faith. That the Lord Jesus had told him, go teach my people faith. And he stuck with it. After hearing it a hundred times, I went, oh, we have located the problem. So, when I saw how faith worked, I was 17 years old. And Dad Hagen said something like this. He said, if you're not happy with what you have in life, check out what you've been saying. Well, I was only 17. In other words, the saying part or the speaking part will determine what you have. You're not so concerned about what they say. You should be more concerned about what you say. So, if you're not happy, check out what you've been what? Say. Well, I was 17. I wasn't happy. Did you know how many unhappy teenagers there are? You don't have to wait till you're 40 to be unhappy. You don't have to wait till you get married to be unhappy. How I many you know that marriage will not cure your unhappiness? But Jesus will cure your unhappiness. But marriage ain't going to cure it. So I was 17, I wasn't happy with what I had, and I realized that I need to change what I was saying. Are y'all still here? Because your words become determining factors on your direction and your destination and the quality of your life. Amazing the power when you take the word of God and put it in your mouth and start saying what God says about you. I was 17 and I realized I'm going to have to find out who I am in Christ, my identification with Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus at 17 and then I'm going to have to start saying something. Wow. So the Lord said it to me this way. He said, the authority of the believer is not just available, it is necessary. All right, let's try this out over here. In other words, when Jesus is teaching on Mark 11, 23, 24, he's not just saying, wow, this is an accessory. It's an amazing thing that's available. It's not just available, it is necessary. Because if you and I don't use our authority, the devil will take advantage of our negligence and will move in. But when you have a spirit of faith, it will take the victim out of your voice. It'll put victory in your voice. It'll put the devil on a run. When you have a spirit of faith, I believe and I speak. Woo! Somebody ought to holler, hallelujah. I have. There is a fight to faith. But it's a good fight. Amen. That Abraham Lincoln, they told the story that Abraham Lincoln had a little dog. Talk about in the country where he was raised, the man had a little dog that could whip all the big dogs. You know, if you live in the country, you've got to have a good dog. So this guy had a little dog that could whip all the big dogs. So they asked this guy, said, how come your little dog whip all the big dogs? He said, because your big dog ain't ready to fight till the fight's half over. He said, but my little dog stays mad. 
I just want you to leave church today and just stay mad. You know what I mean? In other words, keep a spirit of faith and don't wait till next Sunday. But on Monday, come on, I believe and I speak. And look in the mirror and say, I'm going to say a few things. Come on. My mama would say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Somebody said, I believe that. It's not enough to believe it. You got to say it. Come on, say something about it. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh for a minute. Faith. Smith Wigglesworth said, faith laughs at impossibility. Come on, if you're going to be a mountain mover, come on, a giant killer, when it looks impossible, faith laughs. I want you to pick out three things that look impossible right now in your life and go ahead and laugh about it. It may be the person next to you, but don't look at them right now. Listen, pick out three things. <laughs> Come on, pick out three things that the devil said. It's always going to be that way. It's never going to change and laugh about it. You say, but I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I'm going to say something about that situation, and that mountain is going to have to move. Hallelujah. Go ahead and laugh a few more and say, ha, ha, Come on, the devil said the money will never come for that situation. You go, ha, ha, ha. Come on, my God supplies all of my need according to his riches and glory. <laughs> Woo. Say. In other words, that's the initial act of faith. Or you could say it this way. Faith is motion activated. I remember the first time years ago, I went into the airport, went to the men's restroom in the airport. My first time, this was many years ago, so don't judge me. I went into the men's restroom and uh, everything in there was motion activated. I'd never seen that before. So I went into the men's restroom in the airport and I saw the water is going to wash my hands. And so I went over to the water, the water faucet, and it, the water wouldn't come on. And I, I couldn't find a handle. It didn't have no handle on the top. So I thought, man, somebody forgot to put the handle on it. So I looked underneath to see if there was a pedal. There was no pedal. So I thought, how do you get the water out of this faucet? So I thought, I've been to college four years. I ought to be able to figure this out. So I just backed off for a second and stared at it. I thought the lowest bidder must have got this job. He forgot to put a handle on that. So anyway, I'm, I'm standing back looking at it. <laughs> and directly another man came in. And he went over to wash his hands. And he waved his hand underneath the faucet. And the water came out. I thought, he must be a miracle man. <laughs> That's amazing. He just waved his hand and the water came out. So I stared at him for a minute. I thought, I need to get his phone number or something. And he walked over to the paper towel and waved his hand. Paper towel came down. I thought, he is a miracle man. <laughs> but when he left the bathroom, I went over to the same water faucet, put my hand under there, and waved it, and the water came out. And I thought, I am a miracle man. <laughs> then I went over the paper towel, and I saw the sign for the first time. It said, everything is motion activated. Are y'all still here? Come on now. Come on, people look at the Word of God and they know there's salvation in there. There's healing in there. There's deliverance in there. There's blessing in there. So you say, how am I going to get that out? It's motion activated. That means the moment you act on the Word of God, salvation comes out. Healing comes out. Blessing comes out. It's already in there. Are y'all still with me? Faith is an act. The moment you act on the word, God makes himself responsible for your results. 
until you act on the word, you are responsible for your results. Faith is an act. The initial, our first act of faith is to move your mouth. That's what Jesus said about faith. It's whosoever shall say. 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 Believe once. Say three times. All right, let me finish. I'm not really preaching that long. Y'all listen a little bit slow. But I hadn't been here. I hadn't been here in 40 years. Give me a little time, all right? My teacher, my spiritual father, Kenneth E. Hagan, or Dad Hagan, he's gone on to be with the Lord now. And so I, I learned from him, followed him. So I basically just do what he did. So he said he was teaching on faith. Some people think he wrote Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He actually did not. Jesus said it. But he taught on faith. And he said he got a lot of criticism for people that would say things like, you talk about that, name it, claim it, confession, say it. You talk about that too much. So he said he was going to back off from it because he thought, well, maybe so. But he said he was praying around the altar one day and had his Bible open. And while he was praying, the Lord said to him, here, listen close. He said, the Lord said to him, did you ever notice in Mark eleven twenty three, I mentioned the saying part three times and the believing part only once? He said, I never noticed that. So he turned his Bible, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, King James Version. He's going to turn his Bible in reference to the believer, and he counted it. Whosoever shall say, one. Believe those things which he saith, two. He shall have whatsoever he saith, three. He said, well, how many times do I mention believe? He said, really, there's only one believe, and there's three say. So he said, the Lord told him, You'll have to do three times more teaching on the saying part than you do on the believing part or most people will never get it. So he said, instead of backing off, I began to have my double up and triple up on the power of the saying part of your faith. So there's a picture of Dad Hagen teaching. He's got three fingers here and one finger here. And I got that picture in my office. And if you've ever heard him teach, you know what that picture is. Say, say, say. Believe. Because most of my children are not missing the believing because they do believe the Bible. They do believe the Word. They're missing it in the saying department. But I said, you'll have what you say. I'll still here. He said, matter of fact, the saying part is so significant that if you're having a struggle in your faith, you can school yourself into faith with your own words. All right, let's try this out over here. Come on. How many ever had a time of doubt come on or fear or anxiety come in? He said, if you're having a struggle, you can school yourself into faith with your own mouth, your own words. Come on, struggle here in doubt or circumstances. Take the word of God, put it in your mouth and agree with God, but you cannot be silent. You have to lift your voice. Let's try it one more time. I said you have to lift your voice. Come on, your voice. Your voice is your address in the realm of the spirit. The moment you lift up your voice, heaven comes down, angels come down, salvation comes down by the authority that's in your voice. Woo! Come on, that makes you a giant killer and a mountain mover. In other words, he said, you say to the mountain, be removed. He said it'll be cast into the sea. You know what that means if it's cast into the sea? Number one, that means it ain't coming back. Number two, that means there'll be no evidence it was ever there. 
I'm telling you, you're facing things right now. Come on, that a few months from now, that thing shall change. Come on, the scenery will change. The mountain will move. Come on, it will not come back. And there'll be no evidence you ever had that problem. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of his blood, mountains shall be removed. Come on, the scenery is changing in your life. And the devil's running from you. Come on, you're redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The authority of the believer. Come on, the saying part. Let's get close. And the Lord said to me one time, he said, if I would have added two words to the end of Mark 11, 23, everybody would be great faith champions. I said, what two words? He said, if I would have added in church to the end of Mark 11, 23. You know, what's every Seth in church? He said, I didn't put in church at the end of that. He said, most people can control their mouth for about two hours while they're in church. He said, but I said you have what you say, not just in church, but what you're going to say on Monday. Come on, what you're going to say at your house. What you're going to say when the pressure comes on. What you're going to say on Tuesday afternoon. What you're going to say when the enemy attacks your mind. What you're going to say. I dare you to put the word of God in your mouth and say, I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus and say what God says about you. <laughs> the saying part. We're not interested in making swimming motions. I said, we're not interested in making faith motions. We're interested in swimming, winning, overcoming. Come on, you're going to have to say something about it. What are you going to say about it? Nobody else can say it for you. Wouldn't that be nice if you could hire somebody to say it for you? Would, would that work out in physical fitness? No, hire somebody to say, look, I'll give you 50 bucks if you'll work on that treadmill for an hour. No, Jesus said, according to your faith. Woo. No limits. Whosoever shall have whatsoever. Amen. You got time for one more little story? I heard Youngie Cho in 1977. Youngie Cho pastored one of the large churches in the world, 50,000 people in 1977. I was a young preacher, and I went and heard him, and you know what his sermon was? Real close to what I'm telling you. On your words, the power of your words and your confession of faith. So I thought that's amazing because I learned it from Dad Hagen. But here, this pastor from Korea, he's given pretty much the same fundamental steps of faith. So I thought that's amazing. I went back and heard him 40 years later, and he had the same sermon 40 years later. <laughs> but in those 40 years, his church had grown from 50,000 to over 1 million people. Now uh, listen to him. And he said, he said something like this. He said, I was eating with a leading neurosurgeon in Seoul, Korea. The best brain surgeon. And he said, I said to the leading neurosurgeon, you know, we were talking about the tongue and about your words. The neurosurgeon said, we have a new discovery in the study of the brain that the speech center in the brain exercises dominion over the whole central nervous system. He said, when we're doing surgery on somebody's brain, we can probe different parts of the brain and different parts of the body will respond. When we touch the speech center in the brain, the whole body responds. So we've determined that the speech center exercises authority over the whole central nervous system and over the whole body. So Pastor Cho's sitting there and he says, Oh, I know this long time. <laughs> Neurosurgeon says, how you know long time? This new discovery. <laughs> Pastor Cho says, from Dr. James. Neurosurgeon says, who Dr. James? Young Cho says, Dr. James, New Testament. <laughs> the tongue. 
James chapter 3, the tongue, the tongue, tiny member, controls the whole body. Woo! Come on, your tongue, come on, your direction, your destination, no matter what circumstances are, no matter what things look like, your tongue, come on, is a greater power to speak the word of God, your tongue. Amen. Come on, stick your tongue out. We have located the problem. It's not that far away. It's right under your nose. The tongue. I thought I should make a movie and say, call it the tongue. The damage, the disaster that comes from the tongue. But think about the power and the deliverance and the healing that can come from the tongue. Woo, come on. Think about letting God have your tongue every day and say, Lord, I want to speak words of faith and hope and love every day. Come on. Three, one. So I've got a minister friend by the name of Minister, and he was in prison for all these uh, crimes. But he got saved, filled the Holy Ghost. Now he does rap music. He got tattoos all over him. Has a church in Philadelphia. So we're together a lot. So whenever we get together, he wants to take a picture every time. So I take a picture with Minister. He's a little African-American guy. Tattoos all over him, but great, great songs. Great rap song. So when we get together, he always makes some sort of finger sign. He's looking at these finger signs. I'm like, what you doing to your fingers? You know, I'm 71 years old. I don't do no finger sign. I do know at least one, but I'm not too proud of that one. But, but uh, I don't know what your finger signs. So I said, what's your finger signs? What are you doing? <laughs> so I said, quit doing all them finger signs when you're taking pictures of me. Is that some other gang sign? What is that? So I said, next time we take a picture, we're going to do three, one. Let's do it like this. Come on, then do a little mug face look on you. What does that mean? I'm in the faith gang. I'm in a mountain moving, giant killing gang that I have a thought. Come on, and what I say, I have what I say. Come on, in the name of Jesus, by the power of his blood, he has given you authority. You cannot do that for everybody else. Even Jesus cannot do it for you. He's going to teach you to use your authority. Go ahead and laugh for a minute. Ha, ha, ha. Woo, did anybody learn anything this morning? Come on, say, I have faith in God. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I have, we have the same spirit of faith. I believe and I speak. Go ahead and laugh about it. Say, ha, ha. Mountain. Wow. Well, that's the introduction to this message. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to receive an offering after the ushers would come forward. Everybody take an offering envelope. If you're going to give this morning, uh, you can give this morning. Of course, you can give tonight or Monday night. If you give this morning, make your check to MHM or Mark Hankins Ministries. They have envelopes. You can take an envelope. Even if you're not going to give this morning, take an envelope because it encourages me. Just take one. You can fake me out. Even if you're not going to give another, take an envelope. Take it home and pray about it. But take an envelope and uh, make your check to Mark Hankins Ministries. I think they say here you can give online. You can give Cash App. You can give Venmo. All the ways you can give. I'm old-fashioned. I just write checks like, you know, I'm 71 years old. So take an offering envelope. Everybody, just pass them out. If you're going to give this morning or tonight or tomorrow night, use that envelope. And you can give a cash check or credit card. Praise the Lord. The offering while I'm here this weekend is in just a few weeks, I'm going to Nigeria and preach in Nigeria to one of the best churches in the world in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria. And believe it or not, they asked me to come every year. I've been going since 1985, I think, to Nigeria. The pastor that pastors this church, uh, 
he was in University of Lagos when I preached there, and I preached on the word of faith and who you are in Christ. He got a hold of it. He's built a, a giant church in Lagos, Nigeria. He asked me to come every year and teach on the fundamentals of faith. Listen close. Evangelical leaders say in the last days, the greatest distribution of the gospel will come out of Africa. Are y'all still with me? In other words, Africa has been so changed by the gospel of Christ. The greatest churches in the world are in Africa. Over 1 million, 2 million, 3 million people. When I preach to 100,000 people, there'll be another 150,000 watching online because they can't get in there. They take the word. Nigerians are so serious. They'll ask me to preach for two hours, three hours, all day long. They take notes. They say, come back, please. Come back again. They say, well, I said, why do you do so well in Nigeria? They say, because if you live in Africa, you must learn how to live by faith. <laughs> how many of y'all determined to learn how to live by faith? How many going to get your little dog mad? Come on and say, I'm living by faith. You'll not be a victim of whatever's going on in this world. Amen. And so your offering this weekend will go towards that ministry trip. will cost us over $100,000. So we need 100 people to give $1,000. Are 1,000 people to give? How much? I went to school in Texas. Anyway, so we need 500 people. Uh, give whatever you can, whether it's large or small. Amen. And it'll all go together. It'll pay for that. And then we go over there and give the books away at such a low price. We ship them over there and they can all feed on the word. And then they'll change the world and everybody gets saved, healed, and blessed. You're a partner. Amen. So thank you for your generosity this morning, tonight, and tomorrow night. Amen. Let me pray with you over your giving. Father God, we thank you for the word we've heard. We'd like to help that word grow and multiply and go around the world. I pray a special blessing on every giver. You said give and it shall come back. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give to our bosom. Thank you, Lord, for a whopper of a harvest and blessing upon our lives as we sow and give into the gospel, the word of faith, go around the world. In Jesus' name, everybody shout amen. 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 Come on, Pastor Bob. Give your pastor a big hand. Praise the Lord. Forgive me for preaching too long, but it's been Praise 40 years. Lord. Ushers, I want you to come. I'll tell you, wasn't that the greatest word of God you ever heard? You know, that, that's so true. I had, a, I had a dog, Simba. He was an African dog, and somebody stole it. And I, was, uh, I came to church. I was getting ready to preach, and Mark called me and said, Bob, a truck pulled up, got Simba, and uh, it was a, it was a, a, what kind of dog was that, Marta? A golden retriever, put it in the truck, and drove off. I said, well, did you chase him? Did you get him in the car? She said, no, I did not chase anybody who stole your dog. But I was so discouraged. I called my neighbor. I said, Leon, somebody stole my dog. Could you go to, he said, Bob, You'll probably never find that dog again. When he said that, it just my heart just sunk, and I said, I'll never see that dog again. I repeated exactly what he said. So this guy comes to me, he said, Brother Bob, you're so sad. Uh, what's wrong? I said, uh, somebody stole my dog just for church, and I'll probably never see my dog again. He said, what'd you say? <laughs> dog on it. Uh, anyway, uh, so he said, uh, he said, you know, in the Bible, Saul lost his donkey, and he found his donkey. I believe you're going to find your dog. I said, that's right. I'm going to find my dog. And I started saying, I'm going to find my dog. So I got home, and I, I put a, some kind of ad, and the next morning, I got a phone call. Are you Pastor Rogers? Yes. Did you lose a dog? I said, yeah. I said, well, this dog's been barking all night. It sounds like your dog. I went over there with Simba. I walked in that yard. I unchained that dog. He got my, we drove home. But it all, it all changed when I, when I did just what he said. It changed in my mouth. And it'll change for you too. Amen. Let's all stand. Everybody standing. Tonight and tomorrow night.
Brother Mark Hankins will be with us. I want you to invite people. It's going to be great. Let's go out of here with a shout. Let's shout the name of Jesus three times. One, two, three. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God bless you.